so now let's first work on this register functionality okay so whenever there is no data available on a collection we have to register a user and while registering a user we have to store the data inside the database as well okay so first the first thing we have to do is we have to create a new object of the user schema because we wanted to uh, insert the data inside the database right so we have to create a new user schema okay it will be a new user that is a user schema and uh, here we have to create a object in the same format like we had in a user model so we have a mobile number so we have to insert the data like this we have to in a uh, while creating a user schema we have to pass the object and all the field which we wanted to store so suppose mobile number i wanted to store so how i will get the mobile number we will get it from the request dot body mobile number okay so it will give us a like a row a row which we wanted to insert in a database okay so after creating this user okay what we have to do we have to use this user instance which we just created and we can use this save okay so user dot save and it will save the user in the user collection okay the collection which we created okay but there is a thing called then which will give us a callback if like inserting happens successfully okay so we inserted the data and it it is successful okay then we have to do something right after inserting the data so this is a then and uh, then we have a uh, another method called catch okay so that that catch will run if we get some error okay while inserting in a database so this will occur okay so here is the complete thing we wanted to save the user a new user inside our user collection so we use the user dot save in dot then will run after successfully inserting the data inside the database okay so here what we wanted to do actually after successfully inserting the data in a user collection i wanted to send a jwt token to the uh, to the front end for the authorization and how we will send a jwt token okay so let me create a token variable and uh, we have to import the jwt token first so to import it let me go over here let me create a conch jwt and uh, it i will require and json web token so first we have to import jwt after importing the jwt what we have to do we have to do the sign in okay so inside the here only jwt dot sign okay and uh, here what we have to pass we have to pass the message i mean the the mobile number i mean this exact thing we have to pass over here okay so whenever we will verify the jwt token then jwt token will get the mobile number from the the format of the jwt token and it will authorize it that thing i will explain you later but this is a kind of format we have to use okay and uh, also we have to create a key for our jwt token okay and that should be a secret i guess i mean that of course that should be a secret but yeah i'm putting it here like this is bintra clone and you put this thing in a config related file okay but to make the video very fast i'm putting it here only so it's it's a secret key okay you have to make this key as a secret and it is required to generate a jwt token okay 
if you don't know about the JWT token, JWT token, it's uh, look like something like this. Let me just show you JWT token. So you will get some idea. So there is uh, like we have a dedicated website for the JWT token. So and uh, this is something like a JWT token. Okay. And uh, this is encoded JWT token and when you decode this JWT token, then you will get a kind of a payload and everything. So this is this this is the thing. Okay. This is the thing I am storing here. I am storing here. This is the thing which will encode in a JWT. I am encoding the mobile number in a JWT token. So once this JWT token will go on a front end and again the front end will send back to us then we will verify that the mobile number which we sent earlier is same or not so so when we decode the jwt token it will look like this it it will look like this this one okay and this is the real jwt token which will which we will going to send to the front end okay now you have some idea on the jwt token and it's a key that should be a secret but it's not as of now okay now we have to send this this we have to send this jwt token to the front end right so we will do this thing uh, using response.json and uh, i will going to send it in a token parameter the token and along with some message the message will going to be success it does save i don't know why my prettier is not working here okay so yeah in a catch block if something error happened then we have to send some error message as well something we have to add the return we have to add the return the catch will happen then we will send a error it's a catch block we will get a error you know already the catch block so we will send the error hit the save okay this should work and uh, if i will hit this one two three four five six we should get back a jwt token but we are getting a very good oh the app is crashed let's see why it is crashed Header after they are sent to the client. Cannot set header after they send to the client. So basically the error is happening because of this, this return statement. We have to just wait until our else condition is done. Okay. So I will going to hit the save because what was happening that hmm, it was not waiting the IO operation. So it's it's a basically a IO operation. Okay. So when we save the user, it's a kind of IO operation. And uh, after some time, this then will run. Okay. But before running this thing, earlier what which we did is we were sending this data. Okay. And after sending this response, we will try again to send this response. Okay. So first, this response was sent after sending this response we were we were trying to send this response again that's why this error came okay so let me just remove this response okay so we don't need that response because we are handling everything if we have error just send this thing directly okay if we successfully executed then send this thing Again, we will get an error, then we will send this thing. Okay, so we don't need to write an additional return statement. Okay, so now if I will try it again with a new user 78, and if I will hit the save, then I get back a token. This is a JWT token, right? Which I showed you over here. This is a JWT token. Okay, and how we will decode it. And get back our data which we added over here that is a uh, that we will do in a other video where we will use the middleware okay but as of now we have registered a user okay and if i will hit again with the same 
mobile number like one two two three four five six seven eight, then nothing will happen as of now because we are not sending back a response. But in a console log, you will see that it went on this block on a login block. Okay, and here we are not sending anything as of now. That's why it's keep loading. Okay, so in a login, what we have to do? We just have to send back a JWT token, right? So we need this piece of code again. So what I will do? I will just create a new method called send token on send token. I will explain you everything again. Just don't worry. Okay. Control C P to format it prettier. I don't know. And uh, inside the den block, I will going to use this send token. Okay, and this send token will require a mobile number. So let's get back this mobile number, not from the request body. Let's get it from here. Mobile number. Okay, so we have to send the mobile number. Request dot body. I'm generalizing that the send token method. And because we have to use the same token in a login as well, we just have to send back. So, in a login, we don't need to uh, do anything. Okay, we don't need to like uh, insert a new data on a database because in a login, I mean, the data is already available for the that particular mobile number okay that's why we check first we have first query the mobile number from the user collection if the mobile number exists then the result will be not null then we just have to send back the token to the front end if the mobile number is not exist first we need to create a user object which is a row okay and we have to insert that row on a user collection and after inserting the user collection i mean the user data in a user collection we have to send the token and if the uh, we get some error then we have to send back a response that some error is happened okay and uh, here what we can do instead of login successful or some message I wanted to generalize. I wanted to generalize the message as well. So instead of this, we're going to generalize this thing that yeah, if register will happen to register successful successful if login will happen. Then I wanted to send the login successful, so we can differentiate in a front end as well. So if I will go here and if I will click again, error socket hang up view in a console, we got some error login hit. We are sending a token, sending the request dot body mobile number. Response is not defined. Oh, this response which we wanted to access is also not yet defined on this particular function block. Okay, so let's get a response as well. So the response which we are getting from the main function, we have to send it here as well response and uh, response hit the save let's go over here and let's try to send it again now we get back this thing login successful while using the same mobile number if i will use a new mobile number first it will insert a new mobile number in a collection then it will send the token along with the message called register successful we can visualize the data which we sent 
right now in the mongodb atlas as well if i will go on a browser so in a mongodb atlas first i need to refresh the thing the page and in the collection we have a mintra db collection right a mintra db database right and in the mintra db database we have a users collection which is just created and you can find all the query which i made the mobile number one two three four five six seven earlier it was a uh, like error query then we made a again query with this number then we make another query with this number so all the data which we will wanted to insert is inserted in a users collection okay so we don't need to worry about it so everything is working fine okay so if you have any kind of doubt please let me know on a comment because we are good to complete this video we are querying the data in a user collection if the data is available sending the token if the data is not available then storing a user first then descending the token which mean now we are able to generate the rest api endpoint with the jwd token in this token we have to send to the front end flutter app and we have to use it in our front end app okay so now we can integrate it with our front, uh, front end okay so in the next video let's work on a flutter side of code where we will hit this login endpoint and try to register a new user and get back the token from the backend okay so till that please make sure to subscribe the channel like the video share the video to your friend and help me to grow this channel thank you all happy coding see you on the next video